Okay, so hi everybody. I just wanted to make a quick video to address the debugging that we did in class today that we didn't get to finish. Um, the first thing to note is that if you encounter memory errors and or segfaults in C++, uh, I still advise that you try Valgrind. Um, Valgrind can be very informative uh, and can usually detect these in 99% of cases. Uh, funny enough, we're not going to use Valgrind for the rest of this demonstration. Uh, the reason why is that uh, occasionally memory can become so corrupted that Valgrind cannot figure out what is going on, which is what happened to us today. Uh, however, the mistake that we made today was not enormous, um, but it is, it's subtle and it can cause a lot of uh, problems. So uh, here on my screen on the left side, we can see the example that we did for the ping pong. Uh, and the most important thing about this in terms of debugging is to note that the input here is the data that we are sending back and forth uh, and the data that we're operating on. Um, in comparison, the one on the right, we tried to do the vector version of uh, this ping pong exercise. So instead of our input being the array, our input is the size of this array. And then we allocate uh, memory for this array. So I want you to pay attention that the input here is of type int and the array here is of type double star or double pointer. Uh, now the most important part is the one on the left is not a pointer. The one on the right is a pointer. So what you find when we look at our MPI sends and receives. In this case, uh, you know, we talked the MPI send desires this uh, void pointer argument. So we have to take the address of input because it's not already a pointer uh, in order to send it or receive it using MPI. In contrast, on the right hand side, uh, you'll notice we take the address anyway, uh, but double star array is already a pointer. So this is actually our bug. Uh, our bug here is that we do not need to take the address of array. We already have it. Um, this is going to do something very dangerous to memory whenever we have this bug. Uh, it is going to overwrite uh, the addresses of the data that we already have access to. Uh, taking the address of a pointer takes a pointer to the pointer, um, which can lead to all sorts of different problems that involve, uh, you know, in this case, uh, stack corruption and, and other things. And when things get too bad, Valgrind can't actually tell us what to do. Uh, so as a lesson here, if you're going to use pointers, uh, you're going to use array types, you do not need to take their address to send it as a void pointer. It is already expecting an array. Uh, on the right hand side here, um, we're kind of cheating. You can consider that a single integer, the address of a single integer is also an array of one element. And that's really what's going on here, is we failed to adapt on the right-hand side to uh, what the call was looking for. Uh, this is another point to make about void pointers in general, is that they are dangerous um, because they're generic. So it doesn't care what the type void is. It can be a pointer to an integer, it can be a pointer to a double, it can be a pointer to a function. It can be a pointer to anything. And so, uh, you know, while I normally recommend compiling with warnings, in this case, the compiler was not able to help us. 
because of this void pointer problem. So this is a bit of an artifact of how C was designed. Uh, void pointers are inherently dangerous. So you want to do your best to monitor void pointers and to, to be careful in how you use them uh, because you can run into bugs like this. So, um, you know, when we fix this, now that we fixed this, I'll actually undo this because this is an, a good example. And we'll save and we will look at our new code, which uh, of course, we've already made this change. Uh, we'll see that array, 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 array. Oops, we need to remove one more. Uh, no address of, no problems here. We can build this code and we will be able to run this code. Uh, we will do srun pmix dot slash hello uh, and give the argument three. And you can see that we have 3.7 and 3.7 in both our initial arrays. Uh, we then add the value two to each of them and we have no errors. Uh, so this is basically the solution to this uh, issue. Um, this is one kind of error you can encounter, and unfortunately it was a bad demonstration for Valgrind. Uh, again, if you run into a segmentation fault, you probably want to try using Valgrind to start, uh, and then we can talk about how to fix it if you're having trouble interpreting it. Um, one last thing I'd like to address is we'll look at one more example. Uh, MPI actually will do quite a bit to try to help you debug. So for example, you can see I've changed this pointer in our send to be null. Uh, this is a good example of where MPI can help you debug. So if we run this code, uh, the same way we ran our previous code, uh, you will see that we get an error reporting from C1, which is one of our two compute nodes that we have access to. Uh, and you'll see that we have an error from this process on this communicator with the MPI error buffer. It's basically an invalid buffer pointer. Um, well, of course we do, right? Because we just changed one of our pointers to be null. Uh, depending on which version of MPI you use, you may get different results out of this. Um, we'll see if we get a different result out of mpitch, but, um, and go from there. So let's see what happens when we make it with mpitch, and then we'll do srun MPI. And you'll see that we actually get a better um, output message using mpitch, which is why I prefer to use mpitch when we do this instead of using OpenMPI. Uh, but it doesn't really matter. There are pros and cons to both. Uh, in this case, it tells us very specifically that we have an MPI receive, uh, that um, we have some sort of error for, in this case, uh, null pointer in parameter status. What is that null pointer referring to? Well, one of our processes has a null pointer here and a null pointer is not legal. Um, so this often would give you something like uh, a segmentation fault if you did not uh, have explicit error checking which MPI provides. So this can be very useful for you uh, whenever you want to debug. You can get some very specific information about what's happening. Uh, if you get a segmentation fault, it's usually something worse. So I recommend you validate your void pointers. You make sure that your pointers are what you think they are. And you run it through Valgrind to see if Valgrind can help you identify your errors. Uh, of course, when you run it through Valgrind, you need to make sure that there are errors corresponding to your program. Um, because MPI is somebody else's program, you will, you know, it's somebody else's source code, it's a framework that we're using, you will sometimes see errors in Valgrind that do not necessarily matter. For example, these are warnings uh, here for MPI. How do we tell it's MPI? It starts in our libucp, which is part of uh, 
MPI. It's something that MPI is using. Um, also, we may see in this case, this is main, but it's just our call to MPI init. This just depends a little bit on your MPI implementation. It's not a big deal for this case. Um, so these errors up here are not problematic, but if you find an error that looks like this, that corresponds to um, you know, a send or receive call, it may help you actually debug which line you're having issues on. Uh, so that's all I'll say about this. Uh, and so we'll wrap up here and talk about this a little bit more in class next time.